Tom had to go to the works after his accident. But Rusty was more lucky. The fuel was drained out of his tanks and he was soon back to his normal happy self within a few days' time. Summer had turned into autumn and it was now harvest season. All the farmers were picking the crops they had grown over the past couple of months. Duncan was still difficult to move, and he was still refusing it to move because he still had had his wash down. <sighs> Look, Duncan, if you're not moving, then we're going to have a problem. Look, I have a problem, but I don't have a wash that I haven't had a wash down for a month. Oh, Look, Duncan... If you do this, we'll give you a hose down from the nice lady. Oh, can you, Mrs. Niggins? Yes, we'll give you a wash down from her hose. Oh, okay, never convincing, cuz. But don't think you can do this all the time. Alright, we better get moving. We've lost time trying to, trying to convince you to move. So Duncan raced into the yard and was coupled up to his trucks. Duncan stopped at all the stations along the line, crossing Kung, Glenock, Renee's, and Scarlowie. Once Duncan had reached Scarlowie, he headed off to the quarry sidings. He collected a majority of stone trucks, and he was to take them up to Crowthen Gate, where they would be transported to the Northwestern Railway and taken up to the harbour to fix the harbour wall, since it had had severe damage done to it during recent storms. Meanwhile, further up the line of the crossing, a truck's back wheel had gone stuck in a pothole, and lots of people were trying to move it out, but hadn't made any progress in starting whatsoever at all. Duncan happily puffed along the tracks and didn't notice that the signal went red just as he left and now there was no stopping him. They finally started to move the lorry off, but it was too late since Duncan was racing towards him. Everyone quickly jumped out of the way before Duncan smashed into a lorry. Look out! The handle came to survey the damage. Duncan was covered with squashed carrots and they also lay all around him. Trucks were catapulted everywhere, and stone lay randomly scattered around them on the ground. The lorry sat uneasily on a crossing gate, looking out into space, with no expressions. If he hadn't spoken, you would have thought he'd been dead. By the time Sir Handel had finished surveying the damage, he started laughing. <laughs> oh, Duncan, Duncan. Looks like you've been swimming in the garden patch. This isn't a laughing matter. It isn't comfortable having a load of squished carrots on the... <laughs> oh, it will riot, Duncan. Uh, I'll go get the breakdown train. Well, of course, you better should. Otherwise, you're going to have the meat answer to him. <laughs> yeah, right. You're covered in carrots and on the ground. Just go do it. And so it's a handle left chuckling to get the breakdown train. When Duncan was lifted back onto a line, the handle took him away back to the sheds. By the time they reached there, the sun had sc- Scorched the carrots and now they all squashed. Got it to this time. Back in my day, having a coat of paint was to be respected and cared for, not to be covered in whatever that is. What is it? Goo? I don't know. A workman rushed over to Duncan. What is this? Paint? Carrot? Anyway, it needs to come off, whatever it is. And so Duncan lived to have a wash down. 
Over the course of the next few weeks, the handle teased Duncan. Hey, Duncan, be careful of the crossing. It's still harvest season and there's lots of lorries about. Ugh, at least I haven't crashed into a house for breakfast. Huh, Duncan retorted rudely. And he thought he might have finally won the battle. But the handle had won the war. That was years ago. Anyway, as of this, this only recently happened. And the handle made a good point. A few weeks later, the handle was to have get the morning train. See you, Scarlowie. <coughs> See you, baby food. And with that, the handle left, laughing his head off. Duncan gave him a death stare as he left. Duncan, why do you take this? You really shouldn't. Ork had tried to retort and say rude things about him, but everything bounces off of him and sticks to me. Well, Carl will come back round and bite him on the cap, no matter when and no matter where. So Handel went into the yard and was quickly coupled up to the coaches, and he set off. Oh, at this point I should be a comedian. Oh, I'm so funny. So Handel, you do know it is mean to say those things to Duncan. Pah, he was saying rude things about when I crash into the house. Yeah, but you tease him first. Touché, so Handel replied. They soon stopped at Crossington. The handle was uncoupled from his coaches and ran around to collect some stone trucks. He was going to take them up to the quarry. Finally, when the trucks were replaced with the coaches, the handle took them away. The handle soon started to daydream in the sun. All hail King Sahandal! Sahandal, I realise that you never, never ever should pull trucks again. It's bad for you. Sahandal, what? Look out! Up ahead there was a tractor. Sahandal's driver tried to put the brakes on, but it made no use whatsoever. Dun. Sahandal smashed into the trailer, and he was covered in dirt. We stopped at Glenlock, and the hand begged his driver to get the dirt off. The driver, get this newest stuff off of me. I look disgraceful. I'm sorry, the handle. As you said, only one wash down a month. And if all I had you so and we don't really have time, so sorry, you're gonna have to keep on. But I won't tell a soul. But somehow news leaked out and then it spread like wildfire along the line. When Sir Handel reached for sheds that night, Duncan teased him. Oh, Sir Handel, have you been have you been in the garden patch again? Because it looks like you've got the green funnel. And everyone laughed. Sir Handel said nothing, and I didn't say nothing for quite a while. He now learns that it isn't nice to laugh at other people's misfortunes because karma come back come back around any time, anywhere, and bite him on camp. If there's something on your mind, Rusty, because you can always tell me. Oh, I'm just wondering whose tractor this belongs to. Technically, we don't really know. Ah, there's lots of unlicensed vehicles, and probably the person this belongs to is too squeamish to up for his mistakes. You make a good point, Butch. I'm worrying about problems that don't exist. Ah, you're right. Maybe someday we'll find out why if a chocolate was there and where and when it was put there and who it belongs to. You got out on swing, Stevens. But this is but you, you've won this battle, but not the war. You should see I've got some more explosive tricks up my sleeve. Vengeance isn't vengeance, till I say it is.